Welcome, welcome, viewers. We're back once again. This is A Vision Media Broadcast. We're here with another special show. This time, this show is going to be very informative. We're going to teach the youth. This is the Lifers Group. Um, back then, they taught they taught you, you youngsters about scare straight. These men we have is Brother Abdul Robinson, Brother Fred Wilkes, and we have Brother Nathan Moore. Lifers Group grew out of Lifers Group Juvenile Awareness Program, a youth crime prevention program founded in East Jersey State Prison in 1976 and made famous by the documentary Scared Straight. We got another brother coming on right now, fellas, and his name is Nasir. Let me bring him in right now. So we want to have, here we go. We got we got everybody on. All right, G. All right, peace. Peace. Peace, brother. Peace. peace. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, yeah we hear you. Yeah, man, come on out the shadows, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we have everybody on right now. Like okay. I was saying, um, to the viewers, man, we have Nasir Javon. Yes, sir. Peace, brother. This is Tommy Peace. Vision Media Broadcast. Peace, man, to all the brothers that showed up here. Like I said, the lifeless group, man. Uh, they grew. They grew out the juvenile awareness program, a youth crime prevention program founded in East Jersey State Prison in 1976, and made famous by the documentary Scared Straight. Also. They was in the hip hop world, man. They came out with an album, man. You know, Belly the Beast was one of the videos. They got a bunch of songs. They all on YouTube. You can check them out. How y'all doing, brothers? Yeah, doing yeah. great. They yeah. 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 Good, brother. Oh man. So uh, everybody can, you know, I know I said the name, but you can introduce yourself to the viewers, you know, if, if you like. Hello. Starting starting with Fred Wilkes. Uh more commonly known as uh Malik. I don't know what that. Oh, that's, that's the feedback. Yeah. Okay. Uh, more commonly known as uh, Malik. Uh, more so known nowadays as Chef Fred Malik, right? Serving a slice of life. There you go. <laughs> there you go. My man Abdul. Okay, I'm Abdul Rahman. Everybody know me by Rocky Deal, Abdul Bomani. And what I deal with, man, is pretty much is awareness, man. I didn't made the transition already in terms of who I am, what I am, and the direction of where I'm going. You know, I done played the game. I done been there, did it, man. And um, just basically focus. That, that's my focal point. All my time is well spent, man. And, and this is what I do. There we go. There you have it, man. Brother Nasir. Yo, you know, Nasir, you know what I mean? Uh, better known as the Amazing G, Life is Group Official, as y'all can see. You know, still standing strong, still representing, you know what I mean, for the brothers that's on lockdown, for the brothers that's out here, you know, trying to get where they need to be at on a positive note. You know what I mean? Peace. <laughs> that's right, brother. Brother Nathan. Nathan yes, yeah, brother Merciful. Y'all already know who it be all day long. Just sitting up here, setting an example for the youth out here. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Um been doing a lot of football coaching out of Rawway, New Jersey. Um, I have a lot of kids going to college as well. A lot of kids, you know what I mean, trying to get their head on right. And uh, that's my main thing, man. I've been focused on it, making sure the babies is good. That's it. There you go, man. There you go. Now, now, everyone right now, um, everybody, everybody is playing a part right now of, of doing the movement and trying to uplift the youth and, and build, build out there in the streets, correct? Yes, yeah, indeed. 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 That's right, indeed, brother. That's that's what's it at now. And we can go back, like I told uh brother Abdul and, and brother Fred, I was going to talk about the past, the present, and, and the future, which everybody okay. is doing right now. Okay. So I just want to take it back to uh the, the moment as, as a child, man, when y'all was in your teens, man, or maybe a little younger than that. I wanted to know how did everyone grow up, man, and, and your neighborhoods. And we could start with Fred Fred Wilkes, brother Fred. Well, the chef, the chef. Let me get that right. <laughs> All right. Um, my neighborhood, I come uh, from what you, what you would call Middle Jersey, Rowway, New Jersey, right? Union County, right? Uh, I'm in my 70s. I'm sure most people know that by now. Since the documentary came out, you know, we started the program in 76. And our purpose for the program was to steer the kids away from prison, right, by virtue of them 
knowing what really goes on and everything. And for them to recognize, we didn't want nobody to emulate, no emulation, and everything. Don't want, don't be like us, and everything, and come inside here. All right. Uh, what I do when I, I'm the chef, Malik, I don't cook food. What I serve is all mental elevation. Okay. Right. I do the schools now. I do a couple of alternative schools out here in North Carolina. I still travel back and forth to New Jersey. Uh, I do things out there in Texas. Uh, uh, my life was a complete opposite from when I went into prison. I labored under the illusion of being part of Robin Hood and his band of Merry Men. And their concept was to rob from the rich to give to the poor. And since I was poor, my view, my concept was that was all right. Since they were putting it on TV, I didn't recognize that I was being seduced right. into a negative lifestyle. We was cheering Robin Hood on, thinking that he was a hero of some sort. In actuality, he wasn't. He was a thief and everything, which I became a thief, which led me to other things, armed robberies, selling drugs and everything. Uh, disrespecting uh, females in any type of way that I possibly could during that period of time because that's where my head was at. Uh, uh, once being there in the prison is when I became conscious. Uh, I became conscious because I had time to think. I had time to reflect on my actions and my behavior. And I had children that was trying to duplicate some of the things that I did out there. And I didn't want them following me inside the prison, which unfortunately, two of my sons did follow me into the prison. Uh, so I got a firsthand thing of what it would look like when somebody that you love comes into the prison and they may be on another part of the prison. And if something goes on in there, they think you can't get to them at that time. So it really puts you in a crazy situation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, that's a deep story, man. I know you have more. You know, uh, yeah, but I, I'm not going. I'm not trying to hog it up because right now, uh, at this state and everything, <laughs> the young folks are more interested in the message that the brothers is trying to drop off, drop off in the rap because we recognize that early on and everything. When it comes by nature, we are people all right, that are rhythmatic. That's right. Yeah. All right. We flow with music because in in the essence of it, music came from us. Right. All right. So we're back to our true nature. This in the jungle, they use the drums to communicate. Right. All right. Brothers, if you pay attention, when they get down to get lay they rap down, they got the beatbox. They'll beat the drums. Right. So sim so symbolically, we're carrying on a tradition coming back from the motherland. That's right. And every night in the motherland, they sit around the campfires, and the gurus would sit there and they would tell the stories. All right. Yeah. They would tell the stories. And so and that's really how we developed the concept. All right. Because in the course of reading and sitting in there, oh, man, what could I do for my son or my daughter? They're out there. Right. They come to see me. I had one of my sons come to see me. He found some keys in the parking lot. He said, yo, dad, I found the keys. Maybe they fit one of these doors. I'll be back to get you later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like when you when when you hear things like that from a kid that'd be like man i'm messing his head up that's right that's yeah, right because that that's what we do during those period of time we're coming we're messing our children's heads up because when they come down to see us uh we don't want them to see us broke down we don't want that. We don't want them to see us crying because we labored under the illusion that a man ain't supposed to cry. Right, but in right. actuality, a man has no shame about dropping a tear. Right. Uh, man has no shame about that because he know that he is human and everything. And when those emotions are touched, those are things that you can't control all the time. There you go. There you, go. You, only can, you only control certain aspects of your emotions. Everything. And that's why we have so many people that end up in prison because we allow our emotions to dictate our behavior. Uh, and since my emotions was about being broke, not being able to wear the sneakers or the jacket or the caps and everything that some others was wearing to school, led me out into being Robin Hood. That's well said, man. You got you got a deep story. I know you do. We got we got brother Abdul Robinson coming on. Also, gonna tell his story of, of how he grew up in his neighborhood. 
Well, I, well, actually, I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. I was born and raised in Newark, Jersey. I grew up on 55 Murder Street, Merchant Street. You heard of Howard Street, Broom Street. And I went into crime very young. I started around six or seven years old. I was raised by the state as a juvenile, in and out of every state facility in the state of New Jersey as a juvenile. I done been through them all. You understand? I started from a little petty thief, a little shoplifter, and then I began to work my way up the chain and the ladder. <laughs> You, you, you understand? And then eventually it led me from Jarsville in the raw way where I was facing 18, 25 with a 12 and a half stick. And I just came off a six. You, you, you understand? Right. So, you know, that, that was my story and how I came up. You know, whatever the youngest didn't been through, I didn't already been there. You already been and, there. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't been there. And, and even and I've been home about 25 years now. Okay. Uh, less, right, and, 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 and I ain't been back. You know, and, and, and you know my, and, and I'm doing pretty good. I can say I have arrived. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I begin to renew my mind, everything that's out, you have to look within the self to find mm -hmm. the self. You would never right. find it in the materiality and material things. You chasing an illusion. You know what right. I mean? And the brothers is lost out here. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know and, and when you're young, you go through. But when you, you get to a certain point and you feel that you haven't reached your successions by the age of 21, 23, that little inner voice is coming in have you thinking that you are a failure. That's right. That's you right. see what I'm saying? That's right. right. Mm -hmm. now, looking at everything else. So now you got to pay attention to your thoughts. And I say this to people all the time. Pay attention to your thoughts. Listen to the suggestions. What are they telling you? So you know, as we go, you know, and delve deep into the discussion, you know, we'll get more into that thing. But you know, I, I didn't been through all that. I was raised by the state, ended up in Rawway, hit big time. And once I got there, I, you know, I got I was 19 when I got to Rawway. I was about to turn 20. And when I got there, it blew my little young mind because I thought I was in the street. And I see right. bomber jackets and big radios and, mm -hmm. and brothers this and that. Man, I had the movie going. You know, the wow. first day in there, I broke a guy's nose on the basketball court. They like, oh, man, wow. what you know? I'm, and I'm thinking this is the way it's going down. I'm ready for anything. Yeah. But the mindset of, of what you have, and see, and this is something else that we'll get into a little later on, is that when a brother do time and he comes out, mm -hmm. see, he's not really prepared for what's going to come. He got mm -hmm. the movie in his mind of all the stuff that he going to do, but one thing that he haven't yet to master is that that inner demon? It all it always pop up every now and then, right? Oh no, 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 that's your that's your greatest adversary. Yeah, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Everything starts from the mind, but I'm gonna let amazing G take it and then we'll get back, we we'll get back into what we're gonna do and okay. we'll take it from there, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Peace, brothers. Yeah, it's, hey. it's amazing G. You know, well, you know, I grew up in Camden, basically, you know, young boy. You know, my thing when you know when I first you know hit the streets, I I was a stick up boy, you know, and you know running around, you know doing my thing, trying to you know come up, get money, you know, because back then I thing was you know to come up to get out the ghettos and stuff. So you know, right? You know, we was we was we was trying to you know make it happen for our families, you know, feed our younger brothers and sisters out there, you know. Eventually, you know, it led you know I mean to me being incarcerated. You know what I mean? And, and, and the grips of me doing what I did, you know, I messed around and somebody, you know, lost their life in a situation. So I ended up in Raw when, you know, I was waived as an adult at 15 years old. Wow. You know, so I ended up in Raw way when I was about 16, 17. Met Rocky D, Merce and all them down there. You know, um, got with the Life is Group program. And, um, thing was you know they they had you know they, they still were doing a life for group juveniles ju juvenile awareness program and you know our thing was as a juvenile coming in that been through some awareness programs not you know um you know um scare straight you know uh, 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 um specifically mm -hmm. but you know as a younger you know how they take you around the counties or different other you know places trying to scare you up and shake yeah. you when i got the raw way i seen the real thing and you know we was telling guys you know as a youth like you know now the way the way to get through to the youth is through rap music you know what i mean so yeah. you know, that was a way of us to get through you know with the message and carry on of what was going on you know in in, in the early 90s yeah. you know what i mean 
and it rolls over, you know, the 2000s stuff coming on. So that was our whole thing, you know, as far as our rap thing, you know, this is what they was doing out there in the world now. Rap music, you know, the, the beat bop, you know, the hip hop, you know, that was it. The bloody clothes and all that. So, you know, it, it was a way, you know, again, you know, to get through the people and let them know that, you know, that jail shit wasn't what it was cracked up to be. You know, when we was on the streets, it was like, you know, in order for you to get strikes, you had to do a big. You know, we was being misled. We was thinking backwards. You know, I think because, you know, in order for us to be cool or to stand out, we had to get in trouble and be some type of bad guy. You know what I mean? Get you know, and go 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 to a system. You know, in order for us to be certified as the on, on the streets as a G or somebody that was cool or you know, but that's right. You know, when we was in there, it was like that's not what's up. You know what I mean? We was you know misleading our peoples. Right. You know, so we, we got to change. My thing was to change the mindset, the way of thinking, you know, what I mean, of, of, of the youth and anybody that believed in that, 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 that nonsense that was embedded in our minds. You know, what I mean, as a people like this, is what we had to do in order to be somebody or to be looked at as somebody special. So, you know, my thing now is. You know, with the music, you know, we still writing, we still in the studio and, you know, we still putting out music. You know, me, myself, I go to schools, I speak to kids. I have teenage kids myself. Um, so I go to schools, I speak to kids, you know, I'm in the studios. I'm still trying to put music out, videos, so forth and so on, you know. And um, like Rock and them said, we'll get deeper into it later, man. It's It's, it's been a journey, you know what I mean? And dealing with these kids now in this day and time with this drill music and this, you know, this 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 lack of, of respect, I, 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 yeah. I, you know, yeah. it's, 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 it's taking a lot, you know what I mean, to get through to these guys because it's like everybody just want to talk about who they hurt and who they killing. It's not, it's nothing productive. It's like now it's like everything I'm flipped I, and, you know, myself, I'm still trying to understand, you know, what we went wrong at. In a lot of areas, because you know, with the killings and especially in a rap, this is out of control. Yeah, you definitely right, it's, man. It's, it's really out of control. It's like it's like the rappers, you know, the drug dealer want to be rappers and the rappers want to be drug dealers. And it's like before when we was trying to get out the streets, yeah, it's like they're trying to mix it now. You know, we 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 was trying to get out the streets, so rapping is what we did was a way out. But now it's like. You know, rap is now the thing. You know, we come a rapper. We want to be on TV and continue doing what we doing. That when we got more money, and that's like, whoa, what happened? Mm -hmm. Like, that's not what we did. You know, mm -hmm. you know, people going live. They, they, it's, it's, it's like this internet is like crazy. You know, and now you know, and with the music we putting out now, and it's like, you know, we trying to, you know, mean change that, man. You know, because our people's done like lost it again, man. And and we trying to bring them back, and now it's a good time for us to bring this thing right back. Good time, that's what it is. You know, good time, man. That's well said, also. But you know, I ain't gonna give it up. I'm gonna let the brother on um, Merce speak. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just a um, <clears throat> brother. I was born and raised in Philly. Lived in Philly for a little while. Um, bounced around to South Jersey towards Lang City. Um, was in the household with about. Let's say about 13 family members, <clears throat> two big family house. Me, the only baby boy. I had cousins that was around, but like they was doing their own thing while I was young. So basically, I was around a lot of females. Um, my mom and my grandma would raise me. <clears throat> they was around. But at the time, I seen a lot of stuff at a young age. And like my man said, at a young age. You go inside the candy store, you know what I mean? You want that. You want a piece of that candy. But I didn't have money to get a lot of that stuff. You know what I mean? So every time I got a chance, you know what I mean? I was taking it and putting it in my pocket. I know because my mom wasn't paying for that. You know what I mean? A lot of my friends had money. I didn't have it. So and then I got a little older and start saying how to move amongst other people. And I thought that was the right thing. And I kept doing what I did until I started showing stick-ups, robbery. And um, that's what led me astray because I had the mindset of doing the right thing. But when you see things that you don't have and other people do have, you're like, whoa, that's what I want. At that, that's, that's what I want. You know what I mean? And I wasn't a person that wanted because he had it. 
I want it because I want, I need that. I want it for something. You know what I mean? And when I seen it, I know I had a lick. I was taking that and I was getting it. Nothing was going to stop me. And I did right. that at the age of 12 or 13 years old. You know what I mean? Getting in detention, uh, um, being on um, probation, breaking the probation law. You know what I mean? Because a lot of things that my mom couldn't afford that, you know what I mean? I Without couldn't have. Yeah. yeah, so I had to get it on my own. And then as I got a little older and older, like I said, I just started doing a lot of things. I was around a lot of people, drugs, drugs. I seen the shooters. I seen I was around tables with nothing but drugs. And fortunately, I thank Allah that I never, ever, ever dodged in no drugs. You know what I mean? And even though it was in my face. Mm -hmm. Marijuana, yeah, right. but no type of other, no type of dope, no coke, no none of that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So... Then I moved to Rawway, New Jersey, mm -hmm. what, 1975, 1976. And I've yeah. been in Rawway, New Jersey ever since then. That's Union County, <clears throat> where the brother Malik is from. And start going to school, wrestling, playing football. I was doing the right thing. I was probably one of the best wrestlers that they had out there. Mm -hmm. But then I went astray. I wanted. You know what I mean? I, I figured I wanted more. You know what I mean? That wasn't enough. And then got into bigger, you know what I mean? Bigger and bigger things. And this what led me into prison. And I tell kids every day, each and every day, you don't want to be like this because, hey, the good man can go to prison. You know what I mean? A, a good that's doing real great. You know what I mean? That's doing so tremendous. He can go to prison. All it takes is one slip up. You know what I mean? All it takes is one. And I think that's what happened to me. But Prison did teach me a lot. Rawway State Prison, East Jersey taught me a lot. Thanks to the brothers who I'm on here with right now because right. actually right. they was my sole controllers. They showed me how to move. They showed me, look, man, you don't need to be here. You too young to be in this place, but you got to do something better than that. You got, they seen it in me. Put it like that. They seen it in me. And I want to salute to Rocky, Malik, Mason, J. I want to salute to all the brothers, even the ones I call all of them, whether they know or not. They was a mentor of mine. I appreciate every last oh, one of them. Yeah, go ahead, that oh, man, appreciate man, that, man. brother. Please, please. Well said. We, we got viewers. We have another brother just came, man. Kevin, Kevin Scout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sir. Please, brother, can you have the brother? Yes, sir. What's going on? Man? All right, now. Hey, right man. Now. What's, what's going on, brother? Good, man. Man. Yeah, it's been a minute, All right, man. Man. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Real quick, uh, Nathan, your uh, your phone, like you, you go in and out, and you freeze, you freeze it a lot too. All right, let me hold on. Okay. And and brother, brother Nasir just jumped on too. You know, okay. he was out for a second, but he came back in. Okay, <laughs> He's good now. You know what I mean? Oh man, I I thank everybody for coming on. I really do. Um, that's, that's appreciate cool. you for having us on here, brother. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Man. Brother Kevin, we were just talking about how you know the brothers grew up in, in their neighborhoods, man. You know, as a you know, coming up as a teenager, you want to give us your story briefly how, how you came up in the streets? Well, real brief, it was just we all got similar stories. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so much so that the, 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 the stories that the brothers alluded to it permeates all our communities but me personally i was good up until i smoked one marijuana joint man i swear to god i used to play baseball as a kid you know uh uh little league baseball things of that sort i played for my little schools and stuff like that but one day bro this is just I, if i could change this narrative we wouldn't be having this conversation one day i was influenced by a friend of mine we still friends to this day it was the choice that i made we had cut class and went into the bathroom and smoked a joint. What grade, what grade was you in at this time? I was in sixth grade at this time. Mm. I, I was in Hubbard School in Plainfield, New Jersey. Yeah, gotcha. And, you know, it was just one of the things, man. It was, it was, the, it was the 70s, you know. And uh, not to, you know, uh, blame it on the, uh, uh, the time and anything like that. But we smoked that, that one joint, man. And uh, I swear to you, I fell in love with getting hot. Mm -hmm. At that point, <clears throat> I was a great student. It was over. It was, it was just over, period. I went from, and, and, it, and, it, and it escalated quickly. But I went from smoking to drinking syrup to dumping pills 
the sniffing coat, and eventually using hair around. The hair around became my drug of choice. Yeah. And um and it and, and, and within it just spiraled out of control uh so quick, man, that I could put my finger on that incident though. I could I could I can mm -hmm. honestly tell you that. And 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 I tell you, man. Um, like Rocky D, I came to prison when I was 19 years old too. I got sentenced to 25 years of life in prison. Um, went to Borden Town first because that's where they put all our, you know, the young so-called, you know, criminals and things. That's so we went to Borden Town first. And if you messed up in Borden Town, then you go into the penitentiary, and that's where I went. So I went from Borden Town to Trenton State Prison. I stayed in Trenton like eight and a half, nine years before I even got to Rawway. But I met, you know, G and other brothers when I went to Rawway. I, I actually, I, I met Malik first. years ago when, when, when Scared Straight first got started. Okay. So I, was one, I was one of the first ones to go there. But yes, I was also was. One, of, one of the ones that didn't listen. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no I'm keeping it real because, yeah, fact, you yeah. know, the brothers, that, the brothers that I put on Mount Rushmore as far as you know, Lifeless Group is concerned, is 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 is, is one-eyed Billy, uh, Malik, Willie Allen, and Rob Hubbard. Those are the four guys that's on my Mount Rushmore of the Lifeless Group, and those those are the guys that I met, you know, as a young teen. I think I was fourteen years old when I went there, wow. and uh, you know, they got in my face and all that. But the, the 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 for me, I was too far gone before I got there, to be quite honest with you, okay. mm -hmm. and. You know, my heroes wasn't, you know, the Ricky Hendersons of the world or the Daryl Strawberries. It became the, the you know, the Baja Deans and the, the Barbara Rays and, you know, yeah, the Clifford Lawrence, you know, <laughs> exactly. you know, Willie Mac Bees. They became my new heroes, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of that, you know, they, they were, you know, criminal minded and criminal lifestyle, the drugs, so forth and so on. And I, I could bottle that up right there and say that, you know that that's what led me to prison, man. And and uh, it's no badge of honor to have survived. So I don't want to sit here. And, you know, I did forty years, by, by as as a matter of fact, forty years straight. You know, what I mean, went in at nineteen, came out at fifty nine. Wow. But it was so many blessings and so many brothers that I met during that journey, man, that shaped who I am today. And it just so happened you got four of the brothers on the rock, uh, the the podcast tonight that shaped me who I am today. Yes, yeah, wow. appreciate that, brother. Yes, appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, man. I, I find appreciate every, that, brother. I, that's right. Appreciate. Right. Yeah. I find everybody's story uh, deep, uh, informative, um, interesting. Um, you know, like you just said, you went in at at nineteen, correct? And and a lot yes, of brothers sir. went in at as teenagers. I always wanted to know and and to allow the view the uh, youth to know this. When you first go into prison, for the youth, th th this is a, a message for them. What, what what was your first hardest years, man, to 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 adapt to the prison life before missing your family, <laughs> your children, and all that? What was your first hardest years in there, bro? Let me let 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 me put it to you. There are no first hardest years. They're all hard years <laughs> every day. Every day, you know, and, and, and one thing that I, I used to express to them and everything about this, right? The only thing that changes in the prison is the calendars, is the calendar, all the brutality, right? all the aggravation, right? All the irritants that you can possibly think that a person can do to you, they are there. And on more cases than not, they are so thick, it's like a blanket. You are covered in it, right? See, and people didn't really understand the termination right with the, in the belly of the beast, all right? And if anybody that's no gets scientific with it, if you're in the belly of something, the acid eats you up. The atmosphere is full of atmosphere inside there. So every single day and everything is something for you to cry about, whether it's crying due to emotion because you got some news from a family member out there on the street. You lost somebody and you can't go to the funeral. You lose your mother. You lose your father, sisters and brothers or children. You don't have the privilege to, go out. to enjoy those things. So every day becomes your worst day. Every right. day. Uh, every and, day. Until, and until a person 
the attitude beginning to change, the recognize their capabilities and everything is misery every day. 